Welcome to Service Above Self. My name is Clark Mason. Well, t today on uh, Service Above Self, uh, we have a little lighter fare than normal. Um, the, the various things that we do in fundraisers and, and taking care of various is serious issues around the world. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about um, through a, a vocational avenue of service that we do in Rotary, which is basically to, to share our expertise with one another uh, and just to help. And uh, with, uh, to help us with uh, computers this evening, um, we have Shivraz Vishare from uh, Technologies 101s. Yes. And uh, so welcome to the show, uh, Shiv. Thanks, Claire. So uh, tell us about your company, Technology 101s, and what is it that you do? Yes, absolutely. So the, the concept is uh, very simple. We have uh, undergrad and high school students teach very basic computer skills to adults and senior citizens one-on-one -on -one, with the emphasis being one-on-one. -on -one. And that's, that's the key or the unique part. And it kind of is driven by a kind of a quote which I came across, um, which is, uh, I'm a lot more patient with people that are not related to me. <laughs> and, and, and I'm saying that, uh, and, and I, uh, the, the reason is because uh, technology, the, the, the nature of technology, once you know what it is, it's so simple it almost gets irritating. And though all of us know uh, somebody who can help us out, the experience uh, which uh, I have given and received with people I'm related to, I admit hasn't been good. And this is just an avenue to kind of spread, go out to the community, uh, help people who can kind of make technology their friend. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I know the computer is, is probably something that I have probably the biggest love-hate relationship with in this, in this world. You know, in spite of the fact that I've been using one for, you know, probably getting close to 25 years now. Wow. I mean, in, in starting with, you know, uh, you know CPM80 and, and MS-DOS and all that, yeah. and then eventually working up through Windows, you know, even I know I can't keep up with everything and they keep on adding features yeah. that I have no idea where to find or what they do. So I'm glad that you're here today to kind of give us a primer on, on some of the functionality that can be found in today's typical personal computer. Sure. So what do you got for us? Well, what I have is uh, we have uh, customers who we work with, we help. And uh, right now I'm going to teach, uh, talk about some of the very basic uh, concepts and and uh, very surprising uh, issues that we've had and helped our customers with, which may seem very intuitive to somebody who knows how to use computers, but uh, for somebody who is um, early into the concept. Um, and I'm going to use a lot of analogies. I'm going to use a car, I'm going to use uh, a house, and I'm going to use a dog. Uh, and to start with that, uh, I'm afraid of dogs. And everybody who loves <laughs> dogs tells me, embrace them. You know, be, you know just don't, don't get scared of them. You know, if, if you embrace it, if you, if you approach them, with love and without fear, uh, they'll return that to you. And that's the same thing about technology, is embrace it. <laughs> it's nothing to be worried about and scared of. It's <laughs> just take it the way you would and I have to get over my fear, but I'm, I'm, I love to preach, right? So uh, that's, that's the first thing is we tell everybody is kind of make it a part of you and it will, it will reciprocate. And it's funny how that works, but it always does. And uh, more importantly, the message that we give uh, to all our customers is it's okay to click okay. Uh, when you have a dialog box that pops up and says blah 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 okay it's okay to click okay there's nothing wrong there's nothing crazy that's going to happen all right and that's if anything uh, we can take away that's that's one thing we want to do is give the confidence and the comfort to, to people who are viewing this program and uh, i would like to kind of start and i kind of jump start on some of the concepts but more importantly i'd like to admit that i don't know everything about windows 7 myself and that's the message too is you don't have to know everything to use the computer you need to know what you need, uh, you need to know what you use, and a lot of the information is available on the screen. So essentially, you look at what's on the screen. Now, the, the, the challenge is there is a lot on the screen. And uh, if you know where to look, you'll automatically know how uh, to use and be comfortable with technology. All computers. right, guide us through this and show <laughs> us what you got. All right, so let's, let's jump in. We're going to use uh, Windows 7 as uh, the demonstration operating system. Uh, it's, it's the latest release. Uh, it's, well, it's an opinion, a personal opinion, not an endorsement, but it's, it's really good. It's, it's, it's stable. Uh, I've used uh, various versions of Windows. I really like this one. Right, but if and you go out and buy a new computer, this is probably what you're going to get. It's probably what you're going to get, and that's a good reason why uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a great uh, environment to, to demonstrate. Now, uh, when you get a car, let's get to the car example. People ask you, what car did you get? You didn't just say, I got a car. Uh, you know about you know, the engine probably, the color, the make, the model, the year. Uh, and various aspects, and uh, 
let's start with that. Let's let's figure out what exactly is what what the computer is made of, the configuration. So I'm going to actually click start, uh, and I'm going to go over the clicking aspect of it very soon. But I'm going to click start. I'm going to right click on computer, and remember these words: click, right click. I'm going to talk about these later, and I'm going to go properties. And what this does is this gives you what's under the hood or what, what your car kind of is made of. And I'm going to scroll down and cover some concepts. So we've got some items to demonstrate. We're going to try to correlate all these things. For starters, um, the very basic, it's the Windows Home Premium Operating System. Like cars, you have different trims. You, know, you have the basic standard model. You maybe have uh, something like a leather trim. And then you probably have the best navigation and the technology package. So similar to that, Windows 2 comes in different flavors. And then you choose the one depending on the features you need, of course, your budget, and what you want to use the, the operating system for and for me it's kind of somewhere in the middle that's that's the uh, that's the right because in many cases um, you know I know that in my professional environment yeah. um, we have proprietary software that we use in our business and it wouldn't run on a home version we yep. would have to have a professional version in order to have that run absolutely but there is certainly a lot of software that will run, on, run on home versions and I, I'm, I'm glad because I'm gonna actually bring up that business uh, and the, you know some things that run for your business and do not I'm gonna bring that up later once I start explaining some of the other concepts uh, that make up a computer. So for starters, let's go to the rating, which is a 2.5 experience index. It's, it's, it's like any rating for a car. How good your car is, you know, it's got a rating of eight, it's got a rating of seven. In this case, 2.5, it's, it's a strictly okay computer. It, it works for me, and that's what I want to say, is you don't have to go and get the best or the biggest. This works for me, I'm happy with it, and that's why I use it. Uh, the next part, the processor. Now the processor is like the speed of the car. How fast, how fast? can your car go, okay? And what I'm gonna actually cover is the whole experience of using the computer. And let's take an example where you're traveling from point A to point B in your car, okay? So the journey, or the experience of the journey is what I'm gonna compare with the experience of using the computer. So the processor is how fast your car can go. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna go very fast. There's other things that affect your journey. That is the number of people you're carrying, the payload that you're carrying, the traffic on the road. So there's a lot of other aspects that are involved as a part of your total journey or your experience in your journey. And the same reason why there's a lot of other aspects that build or become a part of your computer which affects how fast your computer is or if your computer can do exactly what you want it to do. And like car cars, there's no one car that fits everybody. Same way, there is no one computer that may fit everybody. So it's, it's, those are the kind of things I'm gonna talk about right away. So let's talk about processor, I already did. That's how fast um, your car can go, the maximum speed limit. Memory, that's the payload your car can carry. So in this case, I've got two GB, just to give an example of what a memory looks like. And this is not a laptop memory, this is a desktop memory, that's the, the, the bigger computers uh, that we get. But uh, So this is, is actual RAM? This is actual RAM, yes. So that's random access memory. Absolutely. And, and, and so how does the processor use this? Uh, how the processor uses it, uses it is when it actually does something, it's the amount of payload it can actually keep active while it's running. So for example, you're sitting in your car, you're going at a specific speed, how many people can it carry? What's the, the, how, how, what's the cargo it can carry? What's the weight? Can it tow something? You know, all those things. So the bigger the memory, the more you can carry. Now as you said for your business, you, in some, mostly you may not need to carry everything at all, just a couple of people and you're fine. There are some cases where you have to carry heavy equipment and all cars may not fit that, but it's a very unique business need. So that's kind of where we're coming from, is from a pro memory perspective, uh, you may not need as much memory as one may want, because for all practical purposes, you need a very small subset. Right, so it, it and this can be dependent on software as well, right? Absolutely. The, the, uh, different types of software yeah. might have certain requirements for mm -hmm. amounts of memory, which is something that we recently ran into in trying to upgrade QuickBooks, for instance, yep. um, the new version of QuickBooks books required us to have more memory than we had at this point, so that uh, did present us with some difficulties. Absolutely. So that's one problem you do have and in upgrading. Compared that software to like a big flat screen TV, it's not gonna fit in all cars. So you have to upgrade the memory to make it work. And that's just the concept, but you don't, you don't haul flat screen TVs home every day. So you don't really need that much unless you have a specific need for it. Like you have right. a business that delivers flat screen TVs. So that's the analogy I can have for memory. All uh, right, uh, the next part is the system type or the 64-bit operating system that's out here. Now, compare that to 
the width or the number of lanes you have on the freeway. So imagine you're going through your journey and suddenly the road that has four lanes suddenly becomes eight lanes. Okay, what that means is when the, you're traveling and when there's an increase of threshold from a traffic perspective, things are gonna slow down. What that means is if you have a lot of applications running on your computer, that's traffic. If you have malware, you know, adware and you know, stuff that's running in the background that's slowing your computer down, that's akin to traffic on the street. However, if your uh, width, your, you know, your width increases, so from four to eight, suddenly you have a lot more space to go and that in fact affects your journey. So what 64-bit allows you to do, and it's not an exact analogy, but what it allows you to do is run more things access more things and just kind of increases that bandwidth which definitely affects the way uh, your experience with the computer is in short or kind of tying back to the analogy how your journey is your right so the thing is the thing is that could slow a computer down if you had 64-bit versus 32-bit wouldn't slow a 64-bit computer in, down as in, much. yeah or when you're running multiple things in the background it, it could handle it very well uh, the memory would also play a very big role but it's just kind of an example of understanding how technology or computers is very, very true to what we're doing in, in our lives. So that being said, I'm, what I'm gonna do is we have some components here. I'm gonna pull in, uh, uh, there's device manager uh, that pretty much tells you everything that is inside your computer. And I'm just gonna kind of scroll down the list and if we have components here, I'm gonna actually, uh, so they're just gonna sure. have a feel of what exactly is inside the computer. So batteries, uh, we need batteries. Uh, I think that's, that's something very, very common. But uh, disk drives, now we have two types of disk drives out here. This is the one uh, that fits in bigger computers, big, big computers. Uh, older definitely, but still in use uh, in some forms. Uh, the newer technology is uh, always smaller, faster, quicker, and that's something that's in a computer of a laptop size. So you can see uh, how, how things, I mean, it, they jump uh, with leaps and bounds. Oh, absolutely, and it, 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 it's certainly the case that it's possible that this disk drive or one of this size could actually have greater storage capacity than the yeah, larger I, I one. wouldn't be surprised if they do, <laughs> yeah. and that's very, very true. Um, gonna go down the rest of the components real fast. We have uh, the display adapter, essentially uh, what's needed to uh, display things on the screen, and to give you another example, again, it's, we've got desktop components because they're bigger, but uh, this is something that would go in your desktop and it, the, the, you, know, you see that blue, blue, um, blue kind of a thing out there? Uh, that would kind of directly connect to your monitor. So that's just an example of, uh, I'm gonna close that So down. this would be what, the DB9 HD uh, connector? Yeah, this would, would be just a, a basic connector that goes to the your average PZ yeah, monitor with a screen. VGA or XGA type of uh, adapter. Absolutely. Uh, scrolling down, um, we've got the, 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 the CD, DVD, ROM drives. Uh, we already spoke about the hard drives. Keyboard, uh, mice, uh, now mice, so uh, we experience very interesting uh, uh, issues with using a mouse, because I mean, a mouse is by nature very non-intuitive, because we never, I mean, using a mouse is very unintuitive for the human mind. And what we've experienced with some of the customers that we've had is the way to hold the mouse is very interesting. Okay, now, this mouse uh, has a lot of buttons. However, I'm just gonna talk about the left, the left button and the right button. Um, because those are the things you'd use most often. Now moving the mouse, if you move the mouse on the table, it'll correspondingly move uh, the pointer on the screen. But what happens sometimes is uh, some of what we've seen is people holding the mouse at an angle and then moving the hand straight up and down because it's sometimes more comfortable to do it that way. And what happens is uh, if I, I can use the word vector, uh, the direction is actually at an angle. So what happens is the mouse actually moves at an angle when uh, it's it's held held this way and the hand moves straight up and down. And it's not really designed. It, to it's do not. That. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's, there is a proper way to grip it. There is a proper way to get. There are settings to ac adjust and accommodate for that, and we can get to those if time permits. But it's very important that your main interface with your computer, you are comfortable using it. And I have to again repeat that it's very non-intuitive for somebody who's kind of starting off to say, if I'm moving my hand here, why should something else move here? And those are the kind of things that we work with. Um, uh, and uh, let's kind of run down the list real quick. We have a modem. Uh, this was um, used, I, would, I hate to say earlier in the days, <laughs> because it's really not very long ago. But it was used to connect to the internet. Uh, actually, a phone line would uh, plug in uh, right there. And uh, that's how you had your, I would say, AOL. 
connect uh, a few years ago. So but as they it's, say, it's, it's, it's kind of dial up. Right? Yeah, dial up. Uh, it's kind of historic. I hate to use the word again because it's really not that old, and computers do come with that. Um, let me click this out. Okay, computers do communicate with you off and on, so you gotta kind of respond. It needs attention sometimes. But okay, so that's that. We have uh, monitors, network adapters, a little uh, later technology. Uh, that's what actually I'm currently using. Again, this card goes on a desktop, but I have a compressed version of that card right here uh, in my laptop, and that would help uh, uh, help me connect to the internet. And so this port here is where the cable actually attaches to, to hook it to the, the, uh, the network or the absolutely, internet. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I think there's a blue cable right here which uh, you can use. And there's one thing which uh, uh, is, and kind of just snap it in and you, you, you'll know what I mean. Uh, the good thing about what's happening with computers and technology right now is it's, it's proofed. For example, the, the right connector will only go in the right, right socket. That's, <laughs> that's helpful. That's, that, that's very helpful, so it's okay to try it. It's okay to try putting it in. In many other cases, there's color coding for cables uh, on, on the socket itself, or the, the, the wrong connector will just not go in. So try, try putting it in everything. If it doesn't work, feel free to go behind, push it in, and it, it, it is going to work. So I just feel, feel very good about that. Uh, going further down, we've spoken about processors already. Uh, sounds just, you know, your speakers and your computer. Um, and then we have uh, system devices, a little advanced. I'm not going to talk about that. There's a lot of detail that goes inside. And then the universal serial bus controller is like an interface to plug external uh, devices, maybe like a mouse, maybe like an external keyboard or anything of that sort to your computer. So, so many, like of the, many of the new peripherals have yeah. gone to that rather than the traditional parallel port, serial yes. port with the, you know, like DB9 connector, or the DB25 connector, all those yes. things have kind of gone away and the serial port is the thing that's taken over. Uh, even in I case would say of the, the USB port. The USB, yeah, the USB serial port, port yes. uh, it, for, even for keyboards and, and mice. Absolutely, and, and like it's, it's one port that does everything. It's very convenient, and more, now laptops are coming with more and more USB ports because that's pretty much the way to interface. So when you're looking for a device, you know, say USB, and it'll, it's definitely going to work with your computer. Very good. Shiv, we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk more about how to navigate around the desktop and, and things on the personal computer. Right back. Making the world a better place is an intricate puzzle. And piece by piece, the women and men of Rotary have worked hard to fight hunger, promote literacy, and move the world toward peace. But there is still much to be done, still some missing pieces. And one of those missing pieces is you. Learn how you can help Rotary put together a better world at rotary.org. Rotary. Humanity in Motion. Could you dedicate yourself to a worthy cause? Could you go the distance to keep a child healthy? Could you travel to the other side of the world to help eliminate polio? Could you? A Rotary member could. We're dedicated to connecting children with vaccinations and ending polio worldwide. All it takes is one person to make a difference. Like me. Like you. Could you help change the world? Will you? Rotary. Humanity in motion. Welcome back to Service Above Self. Uh, we're here with uh, Shiv Vishari, and he's telling us all about uh, computers and trying to convince us that the mouse is indeed our friend. <laughs> all right, Shiv, show us how to get around this thing. All right, so getting around this thing, as we discussed before, is the interface is the mouse. And well, yeah, mouse is your friend. There is different ways, different types we can click, but just one step before that is the concept of which people have, a, it's, it's a hard concept to grasp, is how come the same buttons on the mouse, right? The same buttons on the mouse do different things on the computer because it's that one button doing different things. And I want to introduce the concept of context-sensitive clicking. And it's a very simple concept that we live in our daily lives. We have a lot of buttons all over our house, switches, right? You, you turn a switch on, it turns on the light. You turn something else, it turns on a light in another room. It's very intuitive to understand that different buttons do different things. So why is it in the computer that one button will do different things? 
And for that, let's step back and understand that when you're moving around your desktop, it's like moving around your house. Okay, so what it essentially means is if, you're, if I'm here, if I'm here, my mouse is on the screen, if I'm here, um, I'm in a different place in the house. Okay, the button is one, but I'm in a different place. I'm in a different context um, uh, in terms of where I am in the physical space as far as the computer is concerned. If I move my mouse to another place, I'm again in a different place. If I move my mouse to another, so that's why, depending on where you are, you're pressing a button, and thus it's very intuitive now that the, if, if you're in a different place on the computer and you press a button, it will have to do different things because the context is where, you, where the mouse is in the screen. So you're actually, in this case, activating different programs and how it reacts within the different programs yes, is different. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, using that, uh, there's some fundamental clicks that actually work. So one is the left click. The left click is to select. You know, I select an icon. I select any part of the screen. It's very, very uh, straightforward. Uh, the double click. A double click actually opens up a program or actually runs the program. So it's almost like... Uh, one click is to select it. It's almost like putting your finger on the switch but not doing anything about it. And double click in the computer world is to actually flick it. So actually uh, just quickly tapping on it twice is what it, you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. And I'm going to actually minimize this because there's a more important concept which is right click. And right click gives you what you can do uh, when, you are, um, oh, when you're in that space. So for example, you're in different places in your house, in your kitchen, you can do one set of things. You're in the bedroom, another set, and you're, you know, wherever you are in the garage, you do other things. The same way, depending on where the mouse is on the screen and you right click, it gives you the options to do different things. There's certainly a lot of different things that the right uh, button does, uh, depending, as you're talking about, uh, context sensitive. Yes. That, that certainly come as a surprise and, and many functionalities that you didn't even realize right, were there. Absolutely. And again, as I said before, everything you can do is on the screen. So I'm going to actually give you an example of the desktop. Uh, the desktop is almost like how you sit on your desk. Uh, it's got some desk space, okay, as you can see on the screen. Uh, I can add things to the desktop, and that's a, a Windows 7 feature. I can add a calendar, like we all do. Um, so there's your calendar that's on your desktop. Okay, so I just added that right now. I just clicked it, uh, I double tapped it. Uh, I can add a clock uh, to my screen too. So it's very real. I mean, what I want to really, uh, the message is it's very real. It's as, as real as our real lives. There's no real difference. And once you kind of bridge or cross that gap between understanding that whatever is inside the computer is what's outside in the real world, it's going to be very friendly and very easy to do. So that's. What are some examples uh, of other things that we can do with a right click uh, within some of these uh, Ab programs? Absolutely. Now, uh, let's, let's uh, right click on, on, on this icon. And there's various options as a part of Windows 7 that's very much possible. So if you see here, um, you can also right click. And now, to right click gives you the options. Left click, in this case, would select that specific option. So in this case, if I left click um, and my mouse is on open, it's actually going to open up the screen. Uh, it's going to open this program for me. Uh, if I left click on pin to taskbar, it's actually the taskbar is the bar right below on your computer screen. So it's actually going to pin that icon out there so that you can access it whenever you want it. Uh, I'm going to scroll a couple of uh, rows down. I'm going to go to cut copy. What that's going to do is actually going to delete it from where it is. It's actually like moving or copying, moving things over from one place to another. Mm -hmm. So it helps me do that. Delete is kind of completely obliterating it. And I'm actually going to go to the trash can or the recycle bit in this case. Just like your desktop. You don't want something, you put it in your desktop. And Get that's essentially it. How, how it works. Uh, kind of extending out the, uh, so I'm actually, let me left click open uh, the, the browser, which is kind of a very simple way to get onto the internet. I'm going to get the car analogy back because to move around, uh, a real world, you use a car, you drive around. To move around the internet, you use a browser. And like there are different cars, there are different browsers. So, so, so here on the screen, you have examples of different browsers. Absolutely. So I have uh, the four most popular browsers out there. It's Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, Google Chrome, and Safari. Now, what I want to, the message is, like any car you sit in, when you sit in, for, in, in a different car for the first time, the controls are a little different. You may feel a little intimidated. Where's the... You know, where's the, 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 the light switch and, you know, for the wipers and stuff like that. But once you know where to look, uh, suddenly you find yourself very comfortable driving a car you haven't driven before. So don't let the type of browser be any indication of, uh, 
uh, saying, oh, I cannot get on the internet. It's almost like saying, oh, this is not my car, I cannot drive it. It's, right. it's, so it's, you've, it's you've the same got, thing, yes. You have different options of how to get on there, and there exactly. may be some advantages of one over the other Absolutely. Uh, to use that one. And like in any car, uh, the words like you know a light switch may be called something else, the icon may be a little different, but it still does the same thing, and it's kind of about at the same place. So I'm actually going to give you a real quick example just when you get online. I'm actually double-clicking uh, the, the different browsers. They're just going to pop up real quick, and I'm going to show you the same function uh, in different locations. For example, uh, setting the home page for your browser. So in this case, what we have in one of the browsers is it's just like the, the spanner icon on, 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 on the right here. And, and you can click on the options right here. Very, very simple, right? So that kind of gets you to setting the home page. So as you can see, the, the approach is very similar, but uh, the icons and the method is, is different. If I go to another browser, here there's no, there's no spanner on the right. However, there's tools and options. Okay, so there's, there's some setting and then options or preferences which kind of shows up and here you have the home page. So you can pretty much, you know, you can set the home page or set the URL or the destination that you want to do. So the examples are limitless. I mean, this is Internet Explorer. It's, it's, it's the standard one that comes with, with uh, Windows. And again, I can go to tools. I can go to internet options. So it's options, preferences, but as you can see, if you know what to look for, you know, you want to look for tools, you want to look for options, preferences, internet options, you kind of get to the same screen and that's the message is, it's all the same, it's all the same. So you got a lot of options out there. <laughs> yes, all but right. they're all related. All right, so thanks, far. Shiv. Hey. Uh, we're kind of running out of time for this Absolutely. time, uh, but uh, we're going to come back uh, next time around and we're going to talk more with uh, Shiv about ways to use your personal computer and how to find your way around the internet. So until next time, uh, from all of us here at Service Above Self, uh, we encourage you to find a worthy cause and lend a helping hand.